Hi. Well, you may recall at the end of last year, I popped up a couple of videos actually on my quest for a circular sock knitting machine. I've always been fascinated by these old machines. I mean, as a kid, I used to pull clocks apart and enjoy just sort of, you know, trying to get things going. Anyway, I had, as you probably know, 3D printed a couple of machines and I popped videos up on those. And I, in the meantime, I'd been looking uh, at all the eBay auctions, online auctions, and Facebook marketplace, etc., for a sock machine. And I finally got hold of one, which I'm really pleased about. It didn't need too much work, a little bit here and there, but pretty good, all in all. Um, I'll show it to you in a minute, but I made this crate for it because it didn't have one of the original crates, and I wanted to have a nice old crate keep it all authentic. That was actually a research journey in itself, just finding out about how the crates were made. I think it's like anything, when you start getting into something, there's so many sort of rabbit holes that you can go down. <laughs> in this one, I mean, I've done bits of metal work, I've done some making springs and repair work, I've done the woodwork and the research on making the crate, and that's before I got into knitting all of the socks, and there's so many variations. And it actually doesn't stop at socks either. You can be making what they used to call for the World War I troops, the home comforts. And it could be, you know, anything from like special rifle mittens, so you could still fire a rifle in the freezing cold, through to lots of different kinds of sock design. Um, you can make stockings and all those sorts of things. Anyway, let me show you the machine. Ooh, these things are heavy. So this machine is a golden fleece. Whoops, got a little bit of weight coming off there. So I have this specially mounted on a table, but it's fairly standard. There are lots of videos of these machines on YouTube. But this particular one, it's a golden fleece. It's a fairly standard machine and um, it knits beautifully. I had to do things like replace the springs at the top here um, which in the end I just used a knitting machine tension spring and rewound it but this is for doing your heels to get a nice bit of tension and let me show you whoops, inside the box so I've got like a, a ribbing attachment a cone winder it's all these things to research and get into and then I fitted out the box inside to hold cylinders and bits. Oh, it's heavy. Um, so there you are, there's a couple of cylinders in the bottom there. And of course the box itself. The box is a fairly classic sort of construction for an old pallet box. Of course, in the olden times, everything used to get shipped by crate. And this box um, is actually plum wood. A friend kindly got hold of some for me and I planked it up. And I used, actually just used a felt tip pen to replicate the old logo. I took the logo off the machine and replicated it with the pen. And the rabbit hole has gone sort of deeper and deeper and deeper because I've actually written another book. You may recall with the shoemaking, I wrote a book all about how to make handmade shoes, uh, which has been selling actually really well on Amazon. So I thought, let's do a book all about circular sock knitting. I'll just show you a couple of pictures because I had to do uh, one of the cylinders. The person selling the machine said to me, it was on the, where they have lots and lots of needles in one of the cylinders. Some of these little fins were chipped. So I had to actually epoxy them to do a repair and I actually made new fins using epoxy cement, which is quite good. And I'll just show you another couple of pictures. See, this is casting on, making socks. And in my book I actually explain how you can make Again, lots of these research avenues, how to make the tools for casting on, actually using, um, can you guess what that is? It's actually a beater, what you'd use for, you know, beating eggs, but adapted, opened out, bent over ends, and you get what is a casting on device. And I've got a couple more here. 
you can make all sorts of lovely colourful socks. So that's me sewing up um, the toe of a sock and then, whoops, one more here, just to give you a flavour. There's some finished socks that I've done. So yeah, um, good fun. Took me a lot of time, but I've done my usual thing of lots of photos. I do like making it nice with lots of pictures for people to look at. So that has kept me pretty busy, as you can probably imagine. It's quite a lot of writing, an awful lot of research, and um, great fun. Lots of good um, people actually on YouTube doing sock knitting videos, uh, which I sort of acknowledge in the book, but um, there's plenty of material out there if you do want to go down this rabbit hole. I have been thoroughly enjoying it. Uh, the book I've done, I've made it so that it includes sock ribbing using the the ribber unit, so you get nice stretchy socks. And um, that's always a bit of a challenge, I think, for people, but I thought, no, I'll get that. Even if I've aimed a book at beginners, I will um, have a chapter on using the ribber as well. <laughs> I always dreaded the idea of using the ribber, but actually, as I got into it, learned all about it and how it works, uh, it wasn't so bad. You know, it's like anything in life. You research it and you find out how it works. But that's actually been keeping me pretty busy for the past year. So I have been um, just catching up on things. I had a lot of house jobs to do and that's been quite good. And I've been sorting out my workshops and actually um, disposing of a lot of machinery and equipment simply because now I'm going back to what I call hobby status. I've closed my business. I don't need you know, the kit that I used to have. So. <laughs> All change really for me, but um, I'm simplifying life and actually rather enjoying it. Anyway, hope that's just a bit of interest for you on the world of circular sock knitting. And if you do want to buy a book on it, it's on Amazon US, Amazon UK, and um, quite a few other sites across Europe, etc. So it's fair if you're interested. <laughs> anyway, okay, thanks so much for watching. Bye bye.